The top story in our news review, apparently the biggest moment in their political careers it was, and uh, the BBC website uh, shows the US vice presidential candidates, the two main ones for the Democratic Party and the Republicans, uh, finishing, ending their only TV debate of the campaign of the election on the 8th of November. Uh, they argued about policing, immigration, also how best to keep America safe from the threat of IS. This is The Times, leading with the UK government's plans to force companies to reveal how many foreign workers they employ. The new measures are intended to pressurise employers to use more British staff. The business section of The Telegraph says the internet giant Yahoo built a custom-built software programme to scan its users' emails. The request came uh, at the request of US intelligence officials. Italy's joined a handful of countries in selling 50-year bonds. Uh, this is in the Financial Times. The government's first sale attracted orders of almost 19 billion euro. South Carolina Morning Post is reporting on China conducting trials of 5G telecoms equipment that will span more than 100 cities. Beijing hoping to get a head start in the race for the next generation of mobile technology. And finally, a celebrity chef's new take on an old classic has caused a real storm. It's uh, Jamie Oliver who's come under fire on social media for his recipe for paella. Spaniards have mocked his version, claiming it's sacrilege to add chorizo to the traditional uh, Valencian dish. Spain is recalling its ambassador. The flags are flying. <laughs> the Armada is sailing. <laughs> Bonilla Maya, CEO of the MRL Corporation, is here. A great international observer you are, Cornelia. So uh, regarding this vice presidential debate, how many former vice presidents can you think of immediately? Oh, dear. Ah, uh, there you go. OK, no, that's I mean, all the answer can, we need. No, no we that's can, it. That's fine. Don't Dan worry. Quayle. Remember yeah. Dan Quayle? Yeah. Um, remember? My point is, how important is it? Because if they don't mess up, does it really matter? If they mess up, then it might make a difference. If they mess up, it might make a difference. Remember but Sarah people, <laughs> she was not a she was a candidate. She was yes. never a vice president. Yeah. But if they if they you know if the president dies, obviously they yeah. are very they are very important. And if you have an elderly president, that may be you know may be important. The other thing is. Um, if you have somebody like the current vice president, who is really very engaged, Biden, then it's a good thing. He's a force for good. Fritz Mondale was a force for good with Jimmy Carter. So if you have an engaged president that is not competition, but actually somebody who supports the president, then they're important. I think, because uh, my point about Sarah Palin was that was quite a big deal when she was... It was a huge controversy. Well, it, it was, was a huge controversy at the time, and I'm sure that had but, an influence on voters. But what an eyesight. But she could see Rus Russia from her front porch. With, uh, yes. with, with, with Donald Trump, who wants to take the top job, I would imagine those who are considering, point. those who are considering, and many are in the United States, to vote for him, they want to know about his team. Yeah. and who are around him. And I have to say I watched it. I watched it from A to Z yeah. um, last night. Um, and um, well, it was you know, last night, yeah. It was interesting because he was much more detailed on policy and the two of them were really squabbling very well. I mean, they were really, they were really having a go at each other, which was quite interesting to see because especially Kane seems to be a very affable chap. So yes. it was good to see him in fighting spirit. But although they had disagreements, they, they, had, they were not that vast. They, not, they were not that far apart. I mean, on, a lot was on security. A lot was on a story we will talk about later, the Yahoo story, you know, on um, we should use the cyber networks that we have have the cyber capability and make sure we use that, we deploy that. They disagreed on immigration, but it was good to see, I mean, it was good to see that at least somebody in Trump's camp seems to be policy driven. Yeah, Mike Pence, um, by common consent, seemed to come across very calmly. He used to be a radio host, apparently, so he's got that experience of. No, and you could see himself. it. You could yes, see it. he yeah. projected yeah. himself actually better than Kane. Kane sort of kept on interrupting him, and Pence sort of took it in his stride. He clearly. You know, he clearly was used to, 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 to unruly people on the other side of the <laughs> desk. Now, this next story that we're talking about in the front page of the Times is, is reporting on Amber Rudd's speech at the Conservative Party conference. She is the Home Secretary now. And it's the kind of headline you wouldn't expect to see in the UK, is it? Firms no. must list foreign workers. Well, it, but you see, when you look at where the Conservative Party has come, post-Brexit referendum, and I think May has picked up, our Prime Minister has picked up on a sentiment in the country that says 
we are against too much immigration. So it is, this is really, they've moved center-right from the sort of more liberal stance they had before. We are against immigration, and Amber Rudd has taken up on that. And obviously, if you have these Brexit negotiations and if you want to, to climb down on immigration, uh, that she wants list firms to list foreign workers. She wants firms to give preference to British workers. I would say, as somebody who is a businesswoman, I want the best and the most talented. And that I am British. That will help my country more. Because if I am able to build a good company, then you know that, that, will, that will help the economy. I don't actually see how this is any different to what the policy has always been. If you come from outside the EU, your company has to persuade the British government to give you uh, a work permit, right? In Premier League football, say you play for Gambia, say, okay? So what your football club has to do is go to the government and say, this Gambian player is better than any British player, so therefore please grant that yeah, player a work permit. Yes, right? but, so it, but it, no, but it, was, it was sort of a, a northern the wink. And when I first came in as a non-British person, it was a northern the wink. I needed a work permit, but it was a northern the wink. She now wants tests. She wants to, she wants to really clamp down on it. And, you know, especially in the city where, you know, you want a talented trader. Sure, yeah. You don't necessarily yeah. want, yeah. if you get a talented trader from Timbuktu, he's better than an yes. untalented pay, uh, trader from, 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 from York. Not that York people are not potentially <laughs> very talented <laughs> traders. Right, let's move on. And you've already mentioned uh, Cornelia Yahoo, uh, this story where they are, it's reported that they have enabled US authorities to look at millions of emails. Now, Yahoo is not denying it. Yahoo's response has just been, we are a law-abiding company in the United States. Uh, we are abiding to the letter of the law. Um, and, and Verizon, the company that may buy Yahoo, is not saying anything either, and nor is the US and, authorities. And, and we don't really know what sort of information they have passed on. And, if they and have whether, passed on if, any, if, at all. any And what they have passed on, so we don't know. It's a, it's, it's a known unknown. But, you know, are you really surprised in these times of heightened terroris terrorism alerts that we, you know, in this country, we have lots of phone calls monitored, we have cameras everywhere, um, it's just, it's the, new, it's the new game. And as we said, this was a big, big, big chunk of that vice presidential debate was how can we use our cyber capability to keep ourselves safe? The question is, where do you draw the line? Yeah, that's well, the question, it's it? privacy versus safety. Of and, and, that's it a very, yeah. and that's a very, and that's a very personal liberties versus safety of, of all. And that's a, ve that's a very tough one. That's a very tough one. People are very welcome to listen to my babble on oil price. We're happy. That's what we're here for. <laughs> okay, I'll only ask a silly question about this. No, so you won't. Ask a sensible one, no, please. No, you won't, not at all. Why, why would someone want to invest in the Italian economy for 50 years? Because the, it's the search for yield. Every, we can't get yield anymore. We as, have negative in interest rates. Money back on your yeah, investment. Yeah. And as in, yeah, money getting money back. We have negative interest rates. I mean, you know, the negative interest rates in many countries. Um, very low interest rates for shorter term um, sovereign bonds. So this is probably probably reasonably safe, um, and it, but the interesting thing is Italy has to pay 2.8 percent. They had another, um, they issued another bond for 30 years in January or February, and they also had 2.8 percent, so the same yield. That just shows how we don't have enough yield anymore. And you know, s shares, for instance, have become the new bonds. Shares that are reliable dividend payers have become an asset class like bonds used mm, to be. Mm. Because, and we really and have the, to ask the, ourselves. The thinking is that it's a fairly safe bet because Italy's too big to fail, isn't it? it it's too big to fail. It's, it's at least it's in Europe. It's in Europe, so it's too big to fail. But remember Greece? You know, two years ago we all had heart palpitations because of what happened in Greece. So nothing is ever too big to fail. Okay, we're going to clip that 30 seconds up and play it back this time next year, right? <laughs> it, it's, it's too big to fail. Very good, yeah. Okay, forget the 5G in China, which actually I'm very interested in that story very because I like the Paella story no, even more. But the, the interesting thing about the China oh. story is that we have indigenous technology that they want to put in. So that's the interesting thing. Yeah. But let's go to Paella. Yes, takes editorial control. Sure. <laughs> Talk about Paella. Paella. Well, I, I have to say, guys, get a life. I mean, you know, food Who are you is saying that to? Jamie or yeah. the Spaniards? <laughs> <laughs> the Spaniards. I mean, look, I cook Paella without chorizo, I don't stir it, but really, 
food is, you know, I, I take recipes and then I make something of them and I hope people enjoy eating it. But you don't put it in a it. book and, and sell it to other people. I mean, you're not public about what you're doing with paella, no, are you? Do you no, I'm I mean? not public about what I'm doing with paella, but, but really it's, it's food is, it, you, if you had just said my take on paella or something, but you should, you know, you should really, you should really, people are dying in Syria. Um, people are issuing bonds for 50 years. I mean, come on. Get alive, people. They're, they're, they are calling him a food terrorist. You see, there are some things in some countries you which don't are mess absolutely with. sacrosanct. You just don't mess with. Cornelia Meyer, thank, thank you. you very much indeed. Thanks. Always enjoy Do you enjoy like it. paella? I love paella. I, I love, love paella. paella. I could eat a big plateful right now. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>